This is a free lesson from the Photography Masterclass, which has over 20 hours of amazing content to help you become a better photographer. And if you like this video and want to take better photos, click on the link in the description to get an amazing discount. In this lesson, you'll learn what shutter speed is and how it affects your exposure. It is also a way you can creatively blur or freeze motion in your composition. Once light travels through your camera's lens and through the aperture, it goes through your shutter. Think of a shutter as a curtain that is blocking your camera's sensor from seeing the light. When you press your camera's trigger release button or the shutter release button, that big button to take your photo, the curtain or the shutter opens up and closes really quickly to let in light. And this is different on different types of cameras like a DSLR, a mirrorless, or a point and shoot or mobile phone. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the camera anatomy section. In broad daylight, your camera only needs a fraction of a second to capture the image. And that is how shutter speed is represented as a fraction. 1 30th of a second, 1 60th of a second, 1 1 25th of a second, all the way up to 1 8,000th of a second and beyond. And most cameras can even leave the shutter open for longer times, such as 30 seconds. And with many DSLR and mirrorless cameras, you can shoot at custom shutter speeds much longer than that. So how do you change the shutter speed on your camera? Similar to Aperture, there will be a dial that adjusts the shutter speed, and you'll have to find that for your particular camera model. Here I am, and we have a shutter speed of 30 or 1 30th of a second. On the computer, it's represented as 1 30th, so you'll see that, but on the back of the camera, it just says 30. So I'm gonna take a quick picture at 1 30th of a second. And with the same settings for aperture and ISO, I'm going to increase the shutter by dragging this wheel at the top of this camera. This might be in a different place for you if you have a different camera. And by increasing the shutter speed, we are letting in less light, so now it's 1 100th of a second. Even though on this camera it says 100, we know that it's a fraction, so 1 100th of a second. So if I snap a photo here, that's at 1 1 25th of a second. It's a lot darker than the previous photo. Now if we go op the opposite direction, 1 13th, 1 10th, 1 8th, this can go even longer to something like half a second or a full second. But when we do that, it gets really overexposed right now. So the takeaway is that a faster shutter speed lets in less light and a slower shutter speed lets in more light. Therefore, if you're in a situation that is too dark, you can slow down your shutter speed to expose more properly. But there's an important rule to shutter speed that has to do with motion blur. If you're photographing a moving object, you will need a faster shutter speed to freeze that object in time. It depends on how fast the object is moving and you'll need to play around with the shutter setting to get it just right. Wave your hand in front of your face. This is called motion blur. You see how blurry your hand is? And to capture your hand without any blur, you'll need a super fast shutter speed. Luckily, most cameras can do that. You might also get what's called camera shake from a slower shutter speed. This is that micro movement that is captured while trying to hold your camera still. And this is one of the most common issues for new photographers. Typically for beginners, we recommend shooting with a shutter speed faster than 1 80th or even 1 100th of a second to prevent that camera shake. Once you practice a lot and can hold your camera still, you may be able to use a shutter speed of 1 60th or even 1 30th of a second without getting any of that camera shake. But this takes practice. Using a tripod is an alternative way to prevent camera shake when shooting with a longer shutter speed. So now you know what shutter speed is and how it affects exposure. Play around with your shutter speed settings to see if you can properly expose in different locations and lighting situations. And next we'll cover ISO or ISO, the last part of the exposure triangle. And then we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna jump into different scenarios to show you how we would set our settings for getting the perfect exposure. Thanks again for watching this free lesson from the Photography Masterclass. We hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, we have the full class ready and available for you to watch 
right now. So if you wanna take better videos, click on the link in the description to get an amazing discount. The original photography masterclass was taken by over 150 thousand amazing students who have gone on to become professional photographers and win photography competitions using the skills learned in the class and this class is a complete redo that is better than ever with more content that will help you take better photos again if you like this video and you want over 20 additional hours of lessons and content just like this that will help you take better photos than ever before click on that link in the description and enroll in the class. We can't wait to see you inside.